Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. We should put that on T-shirts. <laughs> Hey, Ronnie. <laughs> Ronnie, you've been married for a long time. I've been married for a long time. And on this episode, we're going to talk about signs you are in a healthy marriage next on Men Are So Smart. Hi there, welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. I am Corvette Ronnie. And we're talking about marriage today on this episode. And we thought we would compile a list of some signs that show you that you either are or aren't in a healthy marriage slash relationship. For instance, number one, your spouse in both actions and words conveys that you are his or her equal, uh, especially in this day and age. I think that's fair, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I can't imagine having it in any other way, although there are some men that I'm aware of that uh, like to be the dominant person in the relationship, yeah. and uh, they like for the other person to be more passive um, I'm not sure how that works exactly, but if it works for you, great. Roll with it. Yeah. Uh, the next one, it feels like your player's on the same team. Uh, it's never you against them. There are no sides. Both of you are working for the us. Well, um, I, I think that your parents in their relationship is a good indication of how you will be or not be in your relationship. And in fact, it would seem that some parents were the um, exact exact opposite example of yes. what a, a they good set man. such a bad example yeah. that you strive to do a hundred times better. Yeah. And if that's your motivation, hey, well, it's terrific. Roll with it. Next up, you envision the same future. And this is so key. Will you have children? You got to talk about that beforehand. Yeah. Will you travel? Do you wish to build a life in a quiet house by the water or in the heartbeat of a buzzing metropolis? Even though disagreements about dinner plans, holidays, and paint colors are inevitable, when it comes to the big matters, you are gazing onward on the at the same vision board. You know, and the way it feels for me, I'm almost married 33 years now. Uh, just a couple more months. And although we did differ mm, mildly to begin with, um, you start to assimilate one another mm -hmm. to where you are really almost... Finishing one another's sentences. Yeah, you're almost one person. Yeah. Uh, so that the things that I want, I know my wife wants the same thing. So it does get easier, I think, with time. Not everything does, but certainly your views tend to be the same. Uh, politically, that's helpful. Uh, less arguing. Yeah. So I can't imagine a Democrat being married to a Republican. I just... Boy, especially in these days. Wow. Um, yeah, it'd be much, much tougher. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to mention about that, I had to paint a kitchen twice, almost three times once. Okay. So... So there's Twice. that. Yeah. Not three times. Uh, next up, it's perfectly safe to be your authentic self. There are no fa facades, no masks, no pressures to morph yourself into anyone other than who you are. Like yeah. That. You know what? That that's um that's really deep in that when you first start dating someone, you only show them the side that you want them to see. Right. And that's uh, what's interesting about these people that uh, they fall in love in an instant, you know. Uh, the Bachelor TV shows. Yeah. That's so. That's so awful. Because you know you're you're showing one version, and that person eventually is going to see the other side behind the facade. Yeah. Uh, as Ronnie said, um, so it, not good. No. Uh, number next one. They empower your individuality. Marriage is not enmeshment. It's two distinct identities with unique dreams, histories, 
personalities, and talents who have committed to moving through life alongside each other. You know, that I, when I was younger and in much better shape, <laughs> I really enjoyed playing golf. And I would try to play, I was in a men's league, and I would try to play once a month, and we would play at different courses. Now, my wife loved watching golf on TV, but she really had no interest whatsoever in going out on the golf course, or playing or just riding in the cart. Um, so when I would play golf, she would say to me, please, go have a good time. Enjoy yourself. You need to do stuff for yourself yeah. in addition to doing stuff together. But let that other person have the other interest. <laughs> My wife is hooked on Blake Shelton. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, she is his biggest fan. And I could be all manly and go, oh, my God, you're lusting after another yeah. man. But you know what? It makes her her. Yeah. Vicky's a huge, beyond huge Garth Brooks fan. Uh, she had a little problem at first when he was going through a divorce. She yeah. thought that was a little wrong. Poor Sandy. Yeah, but she's back on board. She is willing to look past all that. And again, she's a, she's a big fan. Uh, your core values are aligned. This means, for example, that if one of life's values is a meditation, yoga, sobriety, find themselves married to a person who insists upon partying their problems away, turbulence is going to be in the forecast. It's going to be uh, there. Yes. But if all the values are in harmony, the goals will be two, and in turn, the actions. Next up, they inspire you to grow. Their love invites you to step out bravely into the world and stand taller and stretch farther and yawn wider. <laughs> Nothing about this marriage shrinks you into someone smaller than you are meant to be. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, next, life-altering decisions are always made with respect to both individuals' comfort levels and well-being. Yeah, I mean, if you've got big decisions... I mean, we don't we don't even make little decisions separate with yeah, yeah. without at least some kind of a consult. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, it it is hey, it's just common courtesy. Well, you know, I always say this, but there's a fine line there too um, with the last two on the that we've covered on this list. Um, you got to let that person. Uh, they they have to feel like. They can be an individual and at the same time be a couple. Uh, and if you're going to be making decisions, you, I don't think you need to ask permission. But I do think that, as Ron was saying, it's common courtesy. For instance, um, sometimes on a Friday night, I go to do this radio show with a friend of ours that right. I know. And I'll sit in on his radio show just for the fun of it on a Friday night. Now, you know, some guys think, oh, i got to ask my wife. No. What you do is you say to your wife, you know what? I'm pretty sure I'm going to be going into uh, Pat's show tonight and I'm going to sit in. I'm not, can I please? Or, right. And it, it, it works both ways. The same holds true. You don't have to ask permission. That's not what marriage is about. You need to be an individual and do things like that for yourself. And the other person needs to respect that. That's all I'm going to say. The, I'll, I'll tell you this. The first couple of years after Vicky and I got married, she was working graveyard. Mm -hmm. And Monday through Friday, I would go to the Fair Oaks softball complex. And I played softball five nights a week. Oh, my gosh. I was only on a team for two nights. But the other three nights, I went there and would sit in the stands with Wait my for gear, somebody, yeah. and somebody go, uh, "You want to play in this next game? Sure. All right. Your name is Larry tonight. Larry tonight. Yeah, you're, okay. you're Larry. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> and I never had to ask Vicky. I, I mean, she was at work, so yeah. who would care? We didn't have kids at the time, so oh. it's a no-brainer. That's just that's respect. Yeah. You know, not asking permission. All right. Their presence feels like a haven, especially. When an emotional storm blows through, Ooh. you gotta be a rock sometimes. Yep. And sometimes you're the wave. Yep. 
Sometimes you're the hammer. Sometimes you're the nail. Sometimes you're the bug. Sometimes you're the windshield. <laughs> Uh, next up, when you are celebrating, they are celebrating. Uh, when you're grieving, they're grieving. Yeah. To a certain extent. I think so. Uh, nah. <laughs> not, not always. Not always. Yeah, I, I would say not always. Uh, both parties are allowed a voice to see how fast I segue. Yes. Both parties are allowed to voice to communicate their feelings, opinions, and perspectives, and neither voice is granted more volume than the other. Except your voice is much more <laughs> yeah. full of volume than, yeah. than tease. Yeah, no, I, that's true. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. Okay, this one, though, is key. Compromise is a frequent visitor in your home, and your door is always left ajar. Wow, yeah, you... You better be prepared to compromise. I don't have a jar. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. You should be open. Yeah, you should be open to, hey, you're not going to, it's like the Rolling Stones song, you're not going to always get what you want. But if you try sometimes, you might just find. You get what you need. Sometimes. Uh, time is prioritized whenever physically possible for intimacy. And it's a pleasure not a chore. Maybe I should report that again, repeat that again. It's a pleasure, not a chore. Yeah. Hmm. I think we forget that the longer that we're married. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, next up, you always know where you stand with them in the grand scheme of things. No matter how fiery the words exchanged in the throes of angst or frustration, you feel secure knowing that ultimately apologies will be made and everything will be okay. The only caveat to that would be be careful choosing your words. Yeah, because you cannot put the toothpaste back in the tube, so to speak. So once it's out there, uh, it's out there. Whether you've had a crummy day or a cartwheeling kind of day, they are the first person you are bursting to unveil its every detail to. I think there's a gray area there as well, because I don't think that your significant other needs to hear all the gruesome details of your day. No. And nor do they wish to no. be burdened with them. Yeah. So I choose, agree. Choose wise. And I'll and I'll tell you, my wife's work is frustrating for her at times, um, and she will give me the Reader's Digest version, which is more than sufficient. Mm -hmm. I know that there's a lot more going on that she's not passing on, and I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, Acts of love are exchanged freely and organically. No one is keeping a tab. Oh, man. Mm. Women. I think they do keep a tab. Why do you always keep score? Yeah, there is. And you save it up. <laughs> you save it up until that one day, and then it, bam, like a volcano. It all comes out. Yep. I... Seven to one, honey. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. What inning is it? It's the bottom of the third. All right, let's see. Uh, you truly, you feel truly seen and known. This human bears witness to the most cobwebbed corners of you, and it feels natural and safe to be this bare bones, this vulnerable. Uh, be careful. Be careful, because sometimes what you say can come back to haunt you. Yeah, I'm not comfortable with that, unfortunately. I'm... I tend to hold a lot of stuff in like that. So, yeah, that's just me. Uh, better versions of each other continuously emerge the longer you are together. Each person amplifies their spouse's potentialities and strengths. Now, I do agree with that. I, I do think that, but there's a, boy, there's, there's some years in there where that's not true. But, yeah, over the long haul, yeah, I think that's probably true. And finally, secrets are off limits. There are no hidden bank accounts, passwords, or relationships. No matter how discomforting the subject matter, there is room for discussing it because a marriage is only as strong as the truth it is built upon. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, it's so much easier to remember the truth than it is to try to remember 
a dozen lies. Yeah. Uh, man, if you've done something uh, that would seem to be, you know, a little shady or sketchy, own up to it. Well, we hope that you've enjoyed this episode on signs you are in a healthy relationship slash marriage. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure and give that uh, thumbs right there, thumb up, click that. And since you're right there, if it's not too much trouble, go ahead and click that subscribe button. We would really appreciate that. A lot of, a lot of bonuses come with it. And below, you'll find all of the information about us, where you can read our blogs, where you can visit us on our website, our social media, and our sponsors who make this program free. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. Until the next time, this has been Men Are So Smart. See you. Bye-bye.